Now, guys, you want to be up there or you want to be out of the shot with this camera? Well, get the fuck off the stage. No, but for real, we're about to start. So, we got to see you right now. Check, check. Okay, just making sure the microphone's here. Okay. Mic check, mic check, mic check. This fan is amazing, by the way. Wherever the fan is, oh, it's right there. It's beautiful. Oh, my God. That's a lifesaver right there. Mic check. Perfect. Say what's up? My whole team is like an army, crazy about the money. Spend it on some ice, yeah. Drip going down me.
All right, welcome. It's Thursday night. Uh, this is a little unusual episode. We're a little bit fancy tonight, as you can see. Thank you, Westside or Westgate Fashion. Appreciate it. I almost said, said Westside West Alley. I'm just saying your name. Pause, pause, hard pause. Uh, but it's Thursday night. We're usually on 106.3, but we've had uh, a few people hit us up and some real special guests in the house tonight. It's a, it's a full house. Um, we're really excited to be in the brand new, re- remodeled, amazing Photo City Music Hall. This place is gorgeous. They completely opened it's it up. It's amazing. Oh, my God. It's beautiful. I walked in, and it's got the oh, shit factor. As soon as you walk in, you say, oh, shit. It's just so many different details, and you can you tell. You say that now? We can say oh, that now. We can. We, we can drop a little. Changed. I got little man in the house. Shout out to Tilla and shout out my mom. Happy birthday, mom. I love you. Happy birthday. Yes, yes, yes. Um, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here and neither would that adorable little guy. But it's Thursday night. We could swear a little bit. It's going to be a fancy show. We've got some great I feel guests. Like I could swear in front of your mom. I don't know. I, I, don't, I feel bad. Too. I didn't swear for my mom until I was 25. All 25 until I said a bad word. Believe it or not. All of a sudden, the radio stipulations are lifted, but then it you bring is. your mom in. It's like, no, we, we still can't swear. <laughs> that, that's our FCC right now. That's our that's our bleep button. <laughs> She'll just raise the eyebrow. She gives us look. Does everybody else's mom give a look where they're just like, eh? it's like, oh, no, what I do? You don't even know if you did something wrong. So we've got some great guests. We're going to start off with Rochester's brand new soccer team, man. These guys brought soccer back to Rochester uh, and not just soccer. They, they're they doing so there much for is. the community. It's, it's, soccer's amazing. Football, okay? I'll go for my Turkish name. It's football. Football, yeah. Football. So they brought back so- or soccer to the community, and it just didn't just bring it back. They're a championship team. Their first season, they won the UPSL championship. Uh, they're all over the community. They're doing workshops for kids. Uh, they're doing blood pressure drives. They're doing so much, and it's amazing. They're so engaged with the community, and that's one of their focal points that I absolutely love. Um, they hit me up, and they're like, hey, you want to be the announcer for the stadium? In my entire life, it, it's a dream to be able to hop did on you, a microphone. Did you ever think you would ever be? No. A, I mean, that's like. <laughs> I get on the goal. It's one of my favorite things ever. Like, every kid you plays FIFA. You go back FIFA. home, and you're like, <laughs> yes. yeah, every, play, every kid plays FIFA, and they're like, they score. And everybody, I'm goal. Go. It, I get to do that, and it's great. It's fantastic. So uh, never give up your dreams of yelling into a microphone to a packed stadium, ever. Okay? It could happen. I don't know how, but it could happen. Uh, so I'd love to introduce the general manager of the championship, Rock City. Boom. Isaac Kissy. We've got the goalkeeper, Stuart Frank, and we've got their awesome sponsor. Uh, this guy is is fantastic. We met him in the announcer booth last week. Randy Agnes, he owns Agnes Wine Cellars, and he basically sponsors the, the whole thing, and he's dressed in a kilt today. Yes. And I will never hate on anybody dressed in a kilt for one reason. That reason... I'm dressed in a kilt. A kilt dish. <laughs> is Axel Rose. <laughs> okay. My kid's middle name is Axel. You know what I'm saying? That's one of my heroes. I've got a giant Axel Rose tattoo, and that is just badass, sir. So just so you know, today is September 17th, so it's halfway to St. Patrick's Day. Halfway to St. Patrick's okay. Day? We're in Rochester. That's our biggest holiday, so we should be able that to... That is our claim to fame. Man, halfway. It, it is. It, it definitely is. Um, gentlemen, thank you for showing up. I appreciate you guys coming Thanks on Thanks for having us. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. What's going thank on, you. sir? How you doing? Appreciate it. So thank you for coming on. Uh, Rock City Boom, you guys were all freaking fire this year, man. Look at that smile. He knows, like, yeah, we kicked a whole bunch of ass. <laughs> sure did, man. It's been an amazing season. I mean, to have a first season uh, and then win it and ha- actually have uh, five players out of uh, Rock City Boom make the best 11 for the Western New York Conference. The best 11? Five? Yes, yep. five. Oh, Dude. my God. Okay, so right five here. out of the 11. Are f- where, where's, so where's the other six from? Uh, I think Syracuse had two teams, big, uh, two players. Uh, Binghamton had two, and I think FC Krajnik had one player. Okay, and we had we, five. We five. Five. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Still made the best eleven. <laughs> My man. Okay, congratulations. Yes. You. You're Thank up you. for Golden Glove, or did you win the Golden Glove? I am up for Golden Glove. Um, it was kind of a surprise to me, which was very cool. First team or uh, first, you know, season for UPSL for Rock City Boom. Bro, you guys won a championship. How is it a surprise, bro? What, the, what do you mean? I don't know how I won this award. Besides, just I was the best on the field, and my team shut out the championship game five to nothing. Uh, okay, there, Mr. Modest. <laughs> Look at it. There you go. Yeah, no, but no, it was it was a blast. Blushing. So he is blushing. He is blushing a little bit. It, it's okay. If I didn't have my olive complexion, I'd be blushing too. We do blush. Thanks, mom and dad. Yeah, yeah, you just can't see it. You, we, we feel it, though. Like, our cheeks, you feel just like, oh, oh no. <laughs> so, uh, that's awesome. You guys, first, your rookie season, you guys won the championship. That's 
That's absolutely mind blowing. Soccer is, I think, such a huge part of Rochester uh, that's been lacking for a little while now. I love that it's coming up, though. Hell I love yeah. that it's coming, like, yeah. you know, with MLS and like everything, like, it's, it's coming. There's a lot of people that are like, that tell me, they're like, how do you watch soccer? And I'm like, how do you not Bro. watch soccer? Like, you wait 45 <laughs> minutes. For, like, it's just such a buildup. I, I don't know. I love soccer. <laughs> I love soccer. I like I watching baseball, too. <laughs> And no joke, I enjoy it. You could fall asleep yeah. in the seventh inning and then wake up like, nah, what, what, what? what? <laughs> Game's a lot. All right, fantastic. Go team. So that's fantastic. Um, what, what I love about you guys is your community engagement. What do you guys have going on? What's in the works? I know you guys have a, uh, what is it, uh, a friendly game against Yemen coming up this Saturday against at 12. Yemen. Where you guys have a celebrity coach. You guys yes. have a Joey Sasso, the winner of the circle coming yeah. up from Joey Netflix. Joey Sasso is Yo, your he's celebrity coach? Oh, oh, he's here. He's, he's going to be on later tonight. So stay okay. tuned. We have Joey Sasso. We have Chaz Bruce. We have the owner of Visual Rides who has been uh, an entrepreneur his whole entire life. Dude, I was talking to this guy. And I'm like, how long have you been an entrepreneur? And he's like, uh, I've never not been. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what I find with a lot of people I get along best with, like serial entrepreneurs, where it's so difficult to imagine doing something in a box. It, you need your freedom uh, to be able to chase whatever shiny, glittery object we see at that moment and go after that. And, he's and that's the awesome. ostrich. We, I call him the ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys have going on, man? So this Saturday around no uh, at noon, we playing... Um a game versus FC Yemen, and we're lucky uh, enough to have uh, Mr. Randy here from Agnes uh, Wine My Cellar, man. who's uh, sponsoring the whole thing, trophy. Is that your wine? Yes. Wine, and you make this that? Is, this is the actual trophy that the winner of the game will win. Oh! That's, that's beautiful. Messy that? Here. It's, it's heavy. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's pretty significant. It's a unique piece. It was made here in Rochester by a company called Ark and Flame. And uh, we also have uh, that's this, beautiful, you know, just a, a nice, uh, very short notice and, and put this together. We're hoping to make something a little bit more unique uh, going forward. But this is really, really kind of a cool item. I mean, it's just it's 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 metal and it's glass. And it's colorful and it's really heavy. <laughs> it it, it kind of sounds like us. And, Metal and, glass, and, and, really and, and, heavy. And, and, <laughs> after quarantine, that's everybody, bro. It's gonna be cool watching these guys walk around with this over the top of it. You know, um, I'm just excited. I mean, uh, I was at the the championship game uh, two weeks ago. Yes. Yep. And. Five nothing championship. I, I saw mean, it. That was crazy. I t every time I turned around, I was like, "Go!" <laughs> it was, it was so, very exciting. Yes, and uh, we are obviously are a wine producer here in the Finger Lakes, and uh, in a few weeks, sometime in uh, mid October, we're going to actually open our tasting room. Can't uh, wait on Route 14, which is a Geneva exit, and we'll invite everyone to come along. Um, and we have some of our wine here. If, if anyone wants to share some, we. Me. Yep. <laughs> I can't believe you actually finished that sentence before she said me. And then on a side note, my girlfriend's kind of mad at me, so we got to set something up. Sorry. So that the might first happen. thing I said when I walked in today, I was like, "Did you have a bottle of wine anywhere in this?" <laughs> Literally place? the first sentence. And they were like, "Yes, but it's not it, not, not now." <laughs> so not only are you, are you uh, do you have a winery going, but you're going to be the basically the first stop through the wine we're tours. Good. Fantastic. Well, thank you for coming on, man. Thank you for sharing. That's a really cool piece. I really enjoy it. And if I'm lucky enough to have a glass before Allie gets to it, I will definitely, definitely try. Look, she's she's Everybody ready. She's like, what's up with that wine? What's up with that wine? Awesome, man. Well, thank you for coming on board. Uh, what else you got going on? So, and Saturday morning um, uh, at 401 Chala Avenue. I'm hosting the blood pressure drive because aside, you know, being the manager of Rock City Boom, I'm also in their healthcare. I'm a nurse, working on my nurse practitioner. Well, uh, well thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah, you. For sure. Thank you. We Same page. My yeah. man. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one of my barbers was on her, one is, was on this uh, third uh, medication for blood pressure. And I found out, I was like, uh, they need some community education. And uh, I spoke to some of the uh, 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 owners of the Rock City Boom, and it's like, there's an initiative we can get into. So we're excited to get that one done in the morning and also just encourage folks in the town to kind of get involved in, in our games and uh, you know, kind of give the community more. Yeah. So when soccer comes back, you know, and it's here to stay, we can keep the community engaged more. Absolutely, and that's, that's a fantastic outlet to have. We appreciate uh, everything that you do. It's been fantastic having you gentlemen on. You. Uh, I'm excited for this Saturday, so if you want to come out, the game's at 12 o'clock against Yemen. Uh, you'll hear me on the microphone. Uh, there, there is a problem, though. Saying some of the soccer names 
is a problem that I've never seen. There's just so many consonants in there. Like, I, I just. I have a lot no of your many friends in how? Lackawanna that I can have. Bro, <laughs> I'm looking at this sheet and I'm sweating. Like, how do I say seven <laughs> consonants in a line? Yeah, how do, we have some names on there. Good luck. Bro. And, and then there's ones that are just all vowels. <laughs> how, how am I supposed to do this, man? Like, at least I got the Turkish names down. Like, I got the, like, Mesut Varda. I got that. I got it down. I got that. It's cool. But the rest of them, like, I'm, I'm sitting there, my son's laughing. Like, everybody's laughing. I'm sweating from my eyebrows. Like, how do I say seven Ks in a row? <laughs> but, gentlemen, we appreciate you coming by. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your wine. You guys are welcome to hang out. And uh, we'd definitely love to taste some. So if we could grab a, a couple glasses, we'll definitely, definitely give it a whack uh, during our next guest. Oh, you got tasting glass? Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Giddy up. <laughs> I, I always come prepared. <laughs> I, I mean, you came in a kilt with the bottle of alcohol. You, sir, you I'm are well prepared. I appreciate you. You can party with us anytime. <laughs> oh, on a side note, man. I'm going to cleanse the palate. You're going to cleanse the palate. <laughs> I'm a little bougie, but. <laughs> uh, big shout out to Alien Fam and uh, Ranked Airbrushing, man. Those guys really came through for us. Uh, they came with a squad of DJs, man. We really appreciate you guys saving my butt there. We got DJ Stepdad. Best <laughs> name ever. DJ Stepdad. Is, it's a group of two. DJ Wrecked and uh, DJ Wook Wonk. Uh, these guys are fantastic, fantastic DJs, and I look forward to working with them further in the brand new, remodeled, gorgeous Photo City Music Hall, man. It's awesome. Let's uh, try this wine, and next up, we've got Shay from Visual Rides. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, so one thing you should never do is never cheer with a glass of water. Never cheer with it. Yeah, that is bad. Like I heard that. No, oh. cheer with a glass of water. Uh, it, it's old Irish folklore that you're cheering for the person's death. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> Don't, so you're going to catch some hands. So if you, if you, if you <laughs> cheers with the water. Cheers German, salute. Cheers to good friends, good time, good people. Saturday. Amen. Cheers. Bro, I don't, I'm not very big good. on wine. I'm more of a Jameson person, but that was fantastic. That was very good. Like, I could drink that. That was really, really good. What is that called? It's, it's a Riesling. Uh, a Riesling? Riesling is uh, the, the most popular grape in uh, Spain. Oh, no, I was going to give you the microphone so you can. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so, so, so Riesling is uh, like the Finger Lakes wine. You know, if you, if you don't have a Riesling in the Finger Lakes, the question is why you're there. <laughs> oh, that, that's true. And we're lucky enough. Uh, we have had, had some really favorable ratings uh, right from the beginning, and and now we're at a point where we're the fastest going Riesling in the Finger Lakes. Oh wow! Congratulations! And, thank you. And I can see and why I'm, it's I'm freaking a, I'm delicious. Just a, I'm just a huge soccer fan. I've been a soccer fan for my whole life, and you know, it's it's my company. So I guess what I'm going to support soccer here in the Finger Lakes in, in, in Rochester. So. Awesome. But it, it's it's a great honor just to be associated with this this championship team. You know, I feel like everybody has that same vibe about each other, and those those vibes are important. It's all about the vibe. So the way you're talking about them, I've heard the owner of uh, the Rock City Boom say the same thing about you, man. He's such a great guy. It's great to have him on board. You know, uh, put him on the radio show, and I remember meeting you, and we, we discussed it earlier. I'm like, yeah, fantastic guy. Bring him on. And I couldn't be happier that you came with a bottle of wine in a kilt. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you. Congratulations thank you. on all your success. I look forward to seeing you guys on Saturday. Thank, thank you. you very much. Next up, we got Shay from Visual Rides. Thank you very much. Appreciate thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great having you guys. Thank you. Thank you. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. Are you guys getting around? All right, Shay, you ready, honey? Come on down. Come on down. I'm like Bob Barker, but like older. Hey, thank you for coming on board, man. We appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate it. No problem. Good to see you again. I did check out the Tesla. I'm, that Tesla was nice, man. I, I did She's not one, open so. the door and get in it, but I will before the night is over. <laughs> man, I was really happy. Tesla stock split, so I finally have a full it's, share of Tesla stock. Have you finally. Investment. It's, yeah. We're, we're still the market's <laughs> a little, little, little messed up right now, we're but I feel still waiting on the rebound. September's bloom, always but, rough. But the seed is planted. Man, I believe in Elon. I believe in Elon. I feel like he's got that entrepreneurial mindset where, like, there's nothing that man can't accomplish. 
Do you think he's a human? I think. I he's don't an think alien. he's a human. Man. He's, he's definitely an alien. An alien. If anybody's an alien, it's Elon Musk. <laughs> if any can, if anybody can record thoughts, <laughs> it's definitely an alien. Awesome. <laughs> well, Shay, we appreciate you coming in. Uh, we appreciate you coming in. We appreciate the photo shoot you did the other day. That was fantastic. What kind of car was? I know it was a BMW. I'm so bad with cars. So it's probably one of the highest I... premium grade BMWs you can purchase. It's a BMW i8. Uh, BMW i8. Yeah, it's a 2000, uh, 2018 BMW i8. That um, was one of the more so premiers. pretty, man. Yeah, I looked at it. Yeah. As soon as you pulled up down the street and everybody could see you, the whole spin class just went. Whoosh. Oh, yeah. Score, it, yeah. It is one of those, like, head-turning vehicles. <laughs> yeah, the doors is. come up. It was gorgeous, man. One of the things that actually is great about that vehicle actually is going to become a commodity relatively soon because BMW actually stopped making them. So 2019, they had a last version called the Roaster. After that, they're no longer making them. So everybody's rushing to get their hands on that specific vehicle because it's pretty much going to be you know, a commodity relatively soon. So, so it's discontinued. Are yeah. they going to replace it with another? Um, so what they're looking at is something called uh, the I3 and I4. Um, they wanted to be more, a little bit more um, affordable, right, for everyday people because oh, obviously no that, that model is not affordable for <laughs> everybody. It's got to be a six-figure no vehicle. Yeah. Um, that, that model we're actually in is roughly, base model is about one, 160. <laughs> that, roughly about 160. Wow, that's... Yeah. The now most expensive car I've ever stepped in, by the way. Like, I opened it, I'm like, this is way better than my you 91 Honda Civic. Yeah, 160. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, now explain to me, that's electric and gas, but it doesn't take regular, what, what kind of gas is it? I so, that specific version is called an E-Drive Edition, which is a hybrid edition, which is you can actually charge it, or you can actually put diesel in it as well, too. Diesel? It tastes yeah. diesel? Yeah, you can put I just drive with diesel. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the regular version, you can put regular gas, but the e-drive is diesel. So yeah. that's a that's a smart move. So the, the car doesn't have depreciation like most vehicles when you Correct. pull it off the lot. Correct. It's got appreciation. Yep. So yep. that kind of leads into the, the mindset of, of the entrepreneur that I, I was so fascinated by when I was talking to you because you have a niche that's completely your own. Uh, there's really nobody doing what you're doing with the exotics. I mean, you've got a fleet of some of the nicest cars I've ever seen. I'm talking like music, video, Jay-Z level type. I've never seen it in my life. I'm afraid to touch it because I will. It's just such a fleet. Uh, and a pleasure to, to work with you. So what is your favorite car out of your entire fleet? The one he drove tonight? Uh, <laughs> yeah, see, well, we had a conversation <laughs> about that. Um, honestly, I, like as you guys were discussing, I love Elon. I think he's an innovator. Um, he's, he's very amazing. innovative. Yeah, indeed. Um, the Tesla is actually one of the, the most smartest, you know, not only smart, but beautiful vehicles I've ever personally seen. I've, I own classic cars. I think classic cars are actually by far the most beautiful vehicle. 87 Monte oh, Carlo. Carlos. Ah, right. Ah. Like, I, I've got a 68 Chevelle, right. and that Ooh. thing never, ever comes out, right? Wow. But the, the, the Tesla, what makes it so special about it is not just the self-driving, autopilot features, things like that, but the, the summon feature where you can pull, pull up to your house, get out, and program the car to actually open the garage, go inside, and close it. What? You can call oh it from God, your house. It opens that. the garage, comes outside. <laughs> And wait for you. There is nothing like it. Everybody's trying to catch up with Tesla right now. So they're pretty much setting, they're, they're setting a benchmark for basically what um, innovative vehicles are going to be moving forward in the future. Do you think Tesla's going to make the first flying car? Uh, actually, Elon's Ooh. already doing it. I mean, look at what he did with SpaceX. You yeah. know, the U.S. Awesome. government is paying you to send you know, astronauts. So I think he's far, far ahead of the curve right well, now. He's, he's from there, so he's like, I yeah. I'm going to go back home, guys. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. one of the things that kind of intrigued me about you is uh, when I asked you how long you've been an entrepreneur, you kind of looked at me and didn't know how to answer <laughs> because that's the only mindset that you have. Yeah, it is. And for me, um, it, it was pertinent to, to my survival, especially being uh, someone of African descent, you know, being black in, in the U.S. You kind of have to have that mindset which is basically, you know, all or nothing, so to speak. Um, you know, I didn't come from a selfish born, you know, so to speak. I grew up in the projects of, of, of New York City, Brooklyn, and then obviously we moved to Harlem at a, at a later uh, time and period. But we grew up like most people of color, and I was determined to make sure that I got out of that and I help other people do the same thing. So, so I've, I've been a serial entrepreneur basically for survival purposes. Everybody so, do, does it for a different reason. So you have four locations, and two are, two are in the New York City area, right? Correct. New York Brooklyn City. Brooklyn and New York? Correct. Well, 
Brooklyn, and then we're in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Oh, okay. So the, the company originally started in New, in New Jersey, but then we expanded to Made New York City and then upstate. <laughs> yeah. um, and then Buffalo and Rochester, right? Yep. Now yes. we're in Buffalo and Rochester. Going on about seven months now. That's that's awesome, man. What, what, what's your process? How was your process when you, you were growing up? Like, how did this become something that you did every day? Like, you know what? I want a fleet of the nicest cars anybody's ever seen. <laughs> I'm going to do the, the illest proms, birthday parties, weddings, night outs, music videos that anybody's ever seen. How does that happen in your mind and then come into fruition? That, that's... For a kid from the projects to premium exotics. When you watch that car go by, you say that's my car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the funny thing you said that. So in, in New York, we have what's called a Brooklyn Bridge, right? Yeah. So me and my little brother, we used to actually go to that bridge. There's a game that. That's my car. For that's those car. who who's been young, we, that's we, we play that really all the time. That's my car. <laughs> so we we grew up in in a, in, a, in a community, should I say, or environment that didn't allow you to dream, right? And most kids, when you tell them you can own that or you can have that one day, they'll say, eh. Not, not really. Either you, you have to be a basketball player or a football player. So for me, one of those things was really proven to my little brother, right, that we can have those things. And one of the first things that I did when I got in a place financially where I was free, I bought him his favorite car, which was a Bentley. And to this day, it sits in his garage. So that's really what it was about me, was really showing other kids, period, that you can dream and you can actually touch those dreams. That's really what it was. Amazing. Before you touch those dreams, how many times did you fall? Oh, honestly, I don't think I would be successful if I didn't fail. I mean, I've, I've Excuse tried me, I'm so sorry many to things. cut you off. Could you repeat that one more time? If I didn't fail, honestly, I would have never succeeded. That, if that's he didn't fail, he would have yeah. never been successful. For every 10 fails, you're lucky to get one yeah. win yeah. as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yep. There's more things that go to the wayside that don't work out that, than that will ever work out. But when you do have something that, that catches, uh, the, the, the tires start spitting properly and, and it meets the asphalt right. The wheels start turning. Right. Mm -hmm. It starts spitting and it catches that asphalt. That's that one shot you need as an entrepreneur to, to grab that wheel and go for. So that's something huge. If you're an entrepreneur out there and you need some something to motivate you, remember, you're going to fail authors. more than you will ever, ever succeed. But when you do succeed, man, how sweet is it? Uh, I mean, there's no reward greater than, you know, the money is great. Freedom. Uh, then, yeah. free, it's freedom. Your time. It, like you said, freedom. It's your time. freedom. You know, you get to choose Wealth and do is, how, is, you, how you choose Wealth how you is live. measured in time. It is. It is. Actually, uh, time is actually the greatest commodity you actually <laughs> have. You know, how you spend it. Uh, most, most people that I mentor, I usually tell them, tell me what your 24 hours looks like, and I can tell you why you're broke. Wow. How many cars did you buy before the Bentley? Um, personally, me, um, when I first started, we purchased three vehicles. The first one actually was a Huracan. It was a 2016 oh, Huracan. That was God. actually one of my dream cars. Um, and so when we purchased that vehicle, we actually, it wasn't even the purpose of renting it out. Uh, at the time, I was actually in entertainment, and a lot of artists that we used to manage, right, we, we got tired of trying to find, at the time, we couldn't find any companies to do what we were looking <laughs> for, rent cars for music videos. So when I purchased that vehicle at the time, every artist, and I, you can go back as far as, say, six years ago, and you'll see most of the artists at the time that was on our roster, every one of them had the same car. <laughs> right? So that, that was the purpose originally when we first started. It was really the Huracan was really for music videos and to try to give um, our artists a, a more professional um, a visual look, so to speak, um, when we got started. What <laughs> color was it? Uh, red. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah. There, very there, few always, things. It's always a bold It's always like lime green, Men, yellow, very red. Very few yeah. things well, the speak simple, louder the simple for Lamborghini, Lamborghini is a bold. Bold, yeah. Red right. Seat, it's kind of loud. So. <laughs> Not a lot of things speak louder than that vehicle. You see the gold doors go up, and it's just like, what is that, yeah. man? It's just fantastic. Listen, it's been an honor to work with you. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for your advice. If you could leave any entrepreneurs, people that were that now are growing up in the projects, that now don't have hope, that now don't think they can accomplish anything as a young black man growing up in this type of climate, what could you say to them? Because I feel right now is the time for our leaders, our people to, to really, to, to show the way. This is our time for our community to really lead our own neighborhoods. Right. Yeah. You know, we, mm -hmm. we can't look nationally. We can't look internationally. We need to look to our neighbors. We need to look to people on our block. We need to look to people on our street as, as the way to move in a direction to move together and how to accomplish that from people who have done it. You know, that, that blueprint, like Jay said, he had the blueprint album. It's basically... A, a roadmap to, to do what you're supposed to do. Correct. Follow Correct. that. Biggie, right. 
not really the best example of the Ten Crack Commandments. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? First of all. If, if you want to be a hustler, you got to know the Ten well, Crack Commandments. Well, it's about perspective. It, it just depends on it how is. you, 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 know, you view that. I can't name them off the top of the head. But So what advice do you have to a young black man? Let's say he's in the projects. He doesn't have hope, and here he happens to stumble upon this show. And this gentleman here from the projects driving the nicest cars ever made. What can you tell him? I, I would say, for me, um, personally speaking, and again, with the kids that I mentor, I usually tell them. And with us, we're usually afraid to ask for help. We're afraid to ask someone to tell us, teachers, right? Um, we have a model. Uh, I come from, from the African diaspora, and we have a model, each one teach one. It actually is an is a, oh, oh, uh, African uh, Part of an each fable. one teach each one, one and one. don't be afraid right, to right. ask for help. I tell Correct. you, hear that, kiddo? Right. All right. Let my son know that. Like I said, always asking for always. help is is everything. If I walk into a room, I want to be the dumbest person in that room. Absolutely. Every you're single the time. In the room, you're in the wrong room. You're absolutely Indeed. the wrong Indeed. room. Indeed. Uh, it's been an honor. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you for everything. Thank you for the shoot. Thank you for forward. having me. Greatly Absolutely. appreciate it. It was Absolutely. great working with you guys as well, too. I'm going to get the Tesla later, though. <laughs> it was a pleasure. We're going to kick some DJs, and we'll be back with the TikTok sensation, Chaz Bruth, and then Mr. Joey Sasso from The Circle. All right, let's get it.
I can do it like that. I can do, I can play anything that I want to play. I can play anything you can think of. If it's a record, if it's a beat, if it's anything that, that you know, that that's within sense of playing, I can play it, you know, and it's just a gift. And I just do what I feel with it. And I can do it in a whole lot of different ways. I can make it sound fast, I can make it sound slow, I can make it sound any way I want it to. All right, welcome back. It's 106.3. No, we're at Photo City now. It's such a habit. My bad. We got West Side Alley in the house. It's your hey. boy, Oz. What's going on? Uh, I'm all over social media. You can find me. Just pop my name into the search tag, Oz Tozan. We got West Side Alley over here. Our next guest is a sensation all over TikTok. There's nobody doing it like him. Uh, this gentleman is fantastic. He's a music teacher. He is a social justice warrior. Uh, he's a dad, all around good human. Dads. And, yeah, dad. We, we have a dad joke about me, but I love the dads. But <laughs> If there's a dad, a dad coming dad. on the show, Allie usually knows him. It's a dad. But <laughs> I'd like to welcome Mr. Chaz Bruce. What is going on, sir? <laughs> I know, don't we have like five DJs in What's here? What's going on, man? <laughs> Thank you for joining How us, How come there's How no music for the dancer? Really? There's no music for the music teacher? I, I'll make my own music. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, wait a minute. I don't want to sit down yet because I'm going to make sure y'all get a good look at this suit that I got on. I Hold did on. notice that. that is crispy, man. Very crispy. I love Navy. Yo, Westgate Fashion. Definitely, definitely. We yo, up. let me shout out Westgate Fashion Park. That's yeah, what it's called. Yeah. Yep. Let me Westgate see the Paisley. You're just trying to touch me. That's what you're trying to do. I love the Paisley Ooh, Cups. Gone. She heard dad and she heard her like, no, 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 I love the Paisley Don't Cups. Front. Yeah. Go that ahead. Go on. You touch it? You good? Beautiful. Um, Is your watch black? <laughs> and everything about me is, baby. <laughs> Here we go. Well, Welcome Look, I'm about to turn her red. She's going to turn red, but then you talk to me. The, uh, the 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 olive green like that uh, that green with the blue I don't think I've seen that before. Man, look, I I I My just I, makes me red. I just picked <laughs> I just picked out the suit on. and and my man he he put the accessories together man that's what the man he hooked me up bro. That's awesome. And, and I want to thank you for that because I, I, I you, wouldn't man. have been able to connect with him if he I hadn't. looks honestly he, it's so it's so as I love it and, and it's you. it's so great just. <laughs> it's it's cool, M minus the eyelashes or whatever. Yo, it's guy guy liner, bro. It's, it's guy liner. It's actually my liner. Oh, that, that's a little weird. But other than that, <laughs> I'm what you got on. <laughs> you over here looking like Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> I was going for Axl Rose, so I missed the mark by a little bit. It's all good. You look still like in the it. 80s, 90s, but you know, I got Madonna and <laughs> Axl, whatever. Whatever. She did her thing, okay? Let me say this. I like the setup. It is I great, like this. Right? this you know what I mean? I feel, I feel important. We love it. Because the last time we were here, we were, we were actually on the stage. So we love this, too. Like, this is the this first is really time nice. for all of us. Shout out to Photo City um, for, like, revamping. I, re I remember this place uh, when it first opened. I was here when it first. I actually helped them open this um, this building when it was a comedy club. It was all comedy. Actually, Dan's dad. Nice. <laughs> I helped him with this. Like, I even helped, like, like, the stage and setting up stuff. I remember we would go up there, and when they first put these chandeliers in there, I was like, Whoa, chandeliers. Did you nice. put those up? Oh, no, no. I, I didn't actually put oh. them up. No, I, I wasn't. <laughs> actually, I built this whole place myself, to tell you the truth. With no. some toothpicks and chewing gum, I put it together. <laughs> Do you love it without the wall, I love it without the wall. I 
absolutely love it without the wall, and I'm definitely going to do more. Shout out to Photo City. Shout out to Danny for having Vision. Hell yeah. Thank you, Danny. Appreciate you having us. Uh, and again, shout out to Alien Fan Promotions and Ranked Airbrush. Man, you guys saved my ass with the DJs. You guys rock. Thank you very much, man. So back to you, Chaz. You got so much going on. Yes. So much. I, I do. I got a lot coming on. That's it's, it's, he's, I, got a lot. I sure do. I sure do. I do. I have a lot. It's cool, though. I, I, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying life. Um, and as someone, I, I've always had a lot going on from when I was a kindergarten. Like, I, I went into kindergarten, right? Here's the funny thing. My kindergarten teacher was my father's kindergarten teacher, <laughs> right? Oh, wow. You're yes. Amazing. And my, my father was a singer, was, is a singer. He recorded nationally, right, as a gospel artist. And my my kindergarten teacher, from the time I walked in, she was like, I know. <laughs> Say out here, touch this piano. And then she started taking me to dance classes and acting. Class. Every day after school, she got me in this performing arts group. And, and, and I was the youngest one. And we was traveling the nation, performing, singing, dancing. I performed for the for the president at the time. Whoa. <laughs> which one? Which, which president? I don't remember because <laughs> I was just like, I don't know. This is an important white guy and I'm here. And I got to perform. I feel like that was a moment in, in, in her life where she came full circle and she was like, oh my God, look at the next generation. Yes. That, and and that, was, that was really, for a teacher, that's, that's it's the whole everything. reason. It's everything. Just for her to be and, able to see it through you. That's and, amazing. And and you want to know something super dope about that lady? She's she's one of the reasons why I, I'm considered a great educator. And she was there for me in the kindergarten when I went to middle school and I graduated from middle school. She was right there when I wow. was in high school and I was traveling. I was with a still band group and we had to travel to Antigua. She purchased my ticket to get there. She purchased all my clothes. What's her name? And then her, I'm going to tell you. Her name is Miss Dodge. She, she was number four school. She was, right, she was at my graduation when I graduated from high school. Then when I was leaving to go to college, she helped get my stuff to go to college. And then when I graduated from college, she was right there when I graduated from college as well and last year which was very touching to me like she was really she was I, I caught wind that she was in the hospital when she was getting ready to go and as soon as I found that out I found out where she was made a beeline there me and my father she was far no she wasn't far she was here oh, in okay, Rochester okay. and she, and she was she was they, she was on her way out and we and she was in her bed and she was like not really responding to anyone at all and me and my father walked in and you saw her like I literally saw her light up you gave me goosebumps bro she, yo listen, let, and, wait it was the, wow. it was the, she <laughs> lit up and, and I, in my head it was like there's no way in the world I'm not gonna be there it was the at yes. all she lit up and then me and my father sang to her that's beautiful and she cried like and and this is like everybody in the room was like what is happening? Right, because she was unresponsive, but wow. she still had the emotion to cry. And she was cry. there, and and she mouthed, "I love you," like as clear as day, oh, as clear I as feel. day. I, I don't want to cry. She right did. Right don't right cry. Right. I'm sorry. I don't mean. To, I, I didn't mean to go there, but y'all. I started. He's the yeah. last of my eyeliner. I don't but it was. Cry. <laughs> yes, his eyeliner gonna start dripping too. Be crying. No, it's good eyeliner. It's good eyeliner, boo. Don't worry. I got you. I would never give you. No, I would never give you no wacky shit. Um, but yes, it was it was amazing. So like, Miss Dodge is everything, and like I I got I got started with being. It all came up because you said I'm doing a lot. I got started with doing a lot at an early age, from dancing, singing, tap dancing. Um, and how important even, is the arts and education? How important is it? That's everything. 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 Your music is a universal language, right? Amen. Universal language right now. Like you can play with music. You can play a chord. Like that's why I love piano. I can play a chord and make you feel something. I don't have to say anything. I can play a minor chord and you feel like, Ooh, or I can play a major chord and you feel happy. That's yes. and how every single human has a preference of music. Period. Every single there's. There's no people out there that don't like music. So everybody does. Miss Dodge, did, did she did she pass or she, she, did. she, she did? After that next day. Wow. So let's take a moment, Miss Dodge. Thank you. Let, let's say a prayer. Send some good you. vibes on Miss Dodge Word. for all that she's done. So. Word. Thank you, Miss Dodge. How did that mentorship affect you? Because obviously it affected you greatly. Um, you're a teacher now. You you've done so much to to kind of lead your community and those around you and it's that neighborhood like lead your neighborhood those down the street uh to to kind of raise those around you it's a huge influence does the party do it for her say what did the party what do it for miss dodge say it one more time does a part of you do what you do for her 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there's, a, there's a combination. I, I've, I've had a combination of really great teachers. Um, from Ms. Dodge, there's my third grade teacher, Mr. Perkins. And he was like, he was a tyrant. No, I wouldn't say he was a tyrant. He was just the, like, uh, he didn't take no shit. And <laughs> it was third grade and he did not play. But you learned in that class. Period. There was no time to mess around and play. They had this is when this, the district they recruited teachers from the south. So he he was no bullshit kind of a teacher. Third grade, everybody was scared of him, and he would literally when he said, "Everybody, put your head down and be quiet." If one person says something, he lined the entire class up in the middle, and everybody put their hand out, <laughs> and he had a ruler. Bow, oh, go wait sit. Wait a minute. Bow, everybody go sit. Catching it. Bow, go sit. And if you cried, you got hit twice. Bow, bow, go Did sit. Did you go to Catholic school? What? No, this was this was in a district. But let me tell you something. That teacher <laughs> had that, I think. <laughs> one. Everybody learned. There was no playing around. You learned. And parents were lined up to get in this class, lined up to get in this class because they knew their kid was going to learn. And, and, and he cared. He cared about his students. So that's something that I got from him. And 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 he was the same teacher that was um, over the performing arts group that I was in that would take kids to Florida, to D.C., to these different places because you didn't play around and you had to respect what he was doing and you learned. And he was super talented and he brought the best out of you. He was like the Joe Jackson. That makes he sense. Was like I the like Joe the Jackson. Joe Jackson. Hold on, I have questions. Everybody over Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Everybody jo over here Joe has Jackson, questions. Joe Jackson <laughs> beat like fame girl. out of his kid. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. Right, right. Wow. So, so. That, I just feel like Prince won. The whole, like, I've, Prince uh, won. You bugging, but. Okay, but no, no, but yes, but that was another teacher, and I, even when I got to to high school, I had I always connected with my music teacher all the time. Any any time I went to another school, there was a special connection with my music teacher, and somehow I ended up teaching, and and I I ended up teaching class when I was in middle school. Like I what? would get pulled out of class. This happened to me in middle oh, school, what do they call high school, them? The, um, and what, college. What do they call them? College. I only went like one semester. Student ago. advisors. Student. No, that's not. No. Oh. Um. No, the RA is the resident. Yeah, student advisor. Oh. Yeah. Nah. I think there's a different well, word for that. I, I it's it's like, something else. It's close. I, I went to college to party. <laughs> I, I was never really enrolled. <laughs> Me too. Enrolled. I was just there at the frat parties. Anyways. And stuff, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but I used to get, I, even in middle school, middle school, I would get, it was it was crazy. Grade, right? I didn't realize what was happening. I was just like, I knew I was telling it and I knew how to I knew how to teach my peers. So in middle school, I'm, I'm sitting here with my friends that I just kicked it with in lunch, teaching them how to sing at the piano because I know how to play the piano. So... That mentorship was instilled in you. Yes, absolutely. It, you're obviously a natural born leader. You have musicians' blood flowing through you. As absolutely. It is. You grew up in a musical household. Absolutely. And, and we, we could see that, and I could tell that. Um, and you're also a big focus on, on your community. Like everybody, it seems to be paying attention to you in the community. There's a lot going on. You're very outspoken. Um, and it, it's. It's different to hear from a random stranger or just a person talking in the news, and it's different to hear from somebody in your community that you know cares about your community, that know cares about you. Even if you never met, there, there's people that you know care about what happens around them to the people around them, and I feel like you're one of those those people that have that light and that leadership. Absolutely, because I, I, I came up in a community. Like, I, I grew up in a community. Like, I knew my neighbors. I used to go, Peace like, the village. what, it, what, like, I, we really, like, man, I knew, and I grew up on the street where I was a lot of kids. So, you know, the best though. Right? Yeah. We well, like, I did too, but we were bad. But I'm so glad that it was all what? of us. Well, and well, half of the streets was my family because it was six of us in <laughs> one like, house. That's even better. So, it was, <laughs> I mean, and we would be out there, we would play, and we want to go, and you wanted to go to your friend's house, but you, if we did, if my parents didn't know you, you couldn't go to the house, but everybody knew each other. We would have block parties. Our parents would all be at one parent's house, and they would just be like, what? So, it, it really was a community, and I Pick think. Up. I think um, that's <laughs> I think that's very important. And when I became a teacher, I wanted to make sure I created that same kind of community within whatever building I was in. So whether I was teaching at an all boys school, which one of the first schools I taught at, it was an all boys school. But I wanted to make sure I created a community first in my classroom and then in the entire school. Then when I went to another can. school, same kind of thing. I want to create a community in my classroom and then create a community in the entire school building. And then what happened was, it's, it just so happened that I blew up on this new uh, platform, TikTok, which happened to be super 
popular with the kids. Did they so, teach you how to do it? Did they Come teach on. me? No, no. Well, here's what happened, right? Here's what happened. Boom. So, I can't do it. I can't so I'm already the cool teacher, right? One is two reasons. One, I'm the, I teach music. So who didn't like, unless you had, well, there's a lot of corny music teachers, so I can't say. The one from the Simpsons. Yeah, there's a lot of corny music <laughs> teachers. But, right, I, it was one of the subjects that most of the time, you can't really mess up music. Or it's like not being a cool gym teacher. Like, So you get kind of a point because like it's not English and math. I so I already got that. Then, too, I was actually the cool teacher. Like, I, you know what I mean? I did Touché. one thing. Like, I can't be bored, right? I have a lot of energy, and I know I, 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 I'm still a kid at heart. So that connection. And I understand that, you know, teaching is a give and take, right? I'm learning from you Amen. as you learn from me. So let's repeat that. Teaching is a give teaching and take. Teaching is a give take. and take. Absolutely. Absolutely 100%. And what I got from the kids, right, is understanding. The, the, what they taught me is understand what I like, understand where I am, understand the world that I live in, and then I will understand you more. So I understood that they were on... At the time, it was called Musical.ly, and they lived on this platform. Oh, yes. It used to be back in the day. Right. That, yes. So they, that's how it happened. They lived on this platform, and they would come in, and every day I would it see them. It was the voiceovers. It started with the voiceovers, yes. remember? Yes. Yeah. It was all that. And, and and then they would tell me and show me these videos, and I'd be like, oh, that's cool. And they used, and, and I'm one of those, like, don't challenge me, because I, I do it all. Like, <laughs> I sing, dance, comedy type of thing. And they used to be like, Mr. Bruce, you don't know nothing about this, and you can't do this. I said, don't play with me. Don't play with me. <laughs> they was like, like ah. So I was like, they was like, you won't do it. I said, all right, cool. I went home, downloaded it. They put this. you on. What? They did. <laughs> I downloaded it. I was like. And I did my first little video, and in my head, as an entertainer and as someone that like understood social media in a sense, I missed the Instagram flow. I missed the Instagram wave. I missed the Snapchat wave. I got Facebook. But when I saw this, I said, ooh, this platform is different, and it's super dope. And I think... In my head, I said, this is going to blow up. So then I went all the way in. I'm talking, we started doing videos. I started doing videos three, four, five times a day. Were you doing then, it like in school with your students? Or? That's what happened. Then okay. I started incorporating it into my curriculum because what I started oh, wow. realizing is it's like, amazing. yo, that's, it's super that's a, dope. That's a grand hustle Super right dope there. because, <laughs> right, one, I understood this is, they, they love this stuff, right? And because there's a certain community, certain language that happens on TikTok that you can only understand if you're on TikTok. So now I have a special connection with my students. Then what I realized is how wow. global the app was. So then like Black History Month, right? When I didn't, I never do things that's like uh, traditional. So Black History Month, no, we're not about to learn about no slavery. No, we're not about to sing slave songs. Nope, I'm going to, I'm going to Africa. So because I got people from Africa following me on this app, I'm looking on there and I'm seeing, well, they're doing this dance trend and they're doing this song. Okay. This is straight from Africa. Yes. Guess what we're doing? in class that so we would do that wow. and I was the first teacher to have a whole class doing these dance trends and so we would do these dance trends I'll connect my phone to the the, the, the smart board and then I will have the students watch as the people from Africa and around oh the God. world commenting on the things that you're doing you're doing an African dance trend and you're connect so I connected my room remember what I said I wanted to make a community in the room and then outside of the outside of the room I wanted to make a community in the in the uh, in the building and then I wanted to make sure I reach outside of this country with what I was doing. I think that's beautiful because it was so long where people never dope. saw anything outside. So that transcends yeah. beyond beyond the, the black that's history amazing. that that's uniting black culture from its roots. Period. In, in showing people that this is who you are, this is who we are, and this is where we that's and, absolutely and, beautiful. And then on top of that, I was the only black male teacher that any of these kids had ever had, which is a whole nother do level you of do you think so from your generation when you would look at black culture dancing it would be in a textbook or it would be on a tv or whatever uh -huh. do you what do you think the difference is from them actually the, seeing it and like the difference is one they're already on this platform and they love it two they know that this is coming direct from the the people Right, the TikTok is not something that somebody put together. It's not the news. It's like everybody. No, it's like they get to look and you can watch a video of this kid in this hut doing this dance, and you know he put his phone up there. This is where he lived because you can look in the background and see like, oh my God, this is his home. Is that that's a zebra so over there? Is that a what? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's awesome, and so that's dude. that's 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 like looking like 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 uh, you know how you would watch uh, uh, the 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 History Channel and see that kind of right. stuff and be like. It, it, but 
but they never go to their house. I just remember the videos they used to put on the wheelie out TV with the one that was strapped to like the wheelie. Oh, yeah. And like I wish Best it wasn't wheel. TikTok. Well, and, and the other thing is, is like they were educated. They started getting educated about what Africa really is, as opposed to what was being fed to them. Because was when, when me growing up, when I, you thought of Africa, right? The first thing I thought of was like naked black kids with flies on their face, like oh, for three dollars you can rent this kid. Like that's not. <laughs> That's not Africa. Like Africa is so rich, but they don't show that, to, and they definitely don't show it to our kids. So when I started doing that and 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 uh, to and, and and putting that in, uh, content in front of my kids, they're like, "Oh, that's Africa. That looks y- yes, this is Africa." I think that yes. that's extreme. I think that breaks Amen. the cycle, honestly. Word. It breaks the cycle. That's so, so important. Th- so so people awesome. think like this TikTok thing was just like you know just the dancing and having lip sync and fun. I was like, no, because you can get way more out of this platform than what you think it is. Of course, I use it for what it's supposed to be used for but like I I am a very creative person so I can see something and then take it and go but we can do this and this (laughs) and this and this and wrap this up in this and make this a whole curriculum in a class and and to the point that makes a great teacher what I I can't do that I'm be like listen you should see me (laughs) trying to do the Chromebook (laughs) what and and that's the thing too had to bring it back on the first day the thing (laughs) the thing that that makes it special is that I'm me I am and I and I hate to keep talking about me, but like this, this is why I am. This who is an I interview am. about you, dog. You good? Yeah, you're I, like, talk about you. We want to know about you. Talk about you. I have so I'm many. Talk about me. As an educator, right? As an educator, I have so many tools to pull from, which a lot of teachers don't, right? If. I understand one. I, I'm a comedian, so I, I I've done I, I've been on stage or a performer singing. I've been on stage and I understand how to control a room and control a crowd. It's the same Read concept. Read the room, yeah, absolutely. It's the same concept. They're just younger kids, younger adults, and sometimes the adults it's the same, they act like the kids. And you ha- you have to be able to control a room and know what to do and know how to maneuver and know how to capture a moment. Same kind of thing. And I have different tools to pull from. So if I get a kid that want to be funny, oh, you want to be funny you can't be funnier than me because i do <laughs> like what i do this bro what? I do oh, this. You're oh so funny. right oh you, you, you can't be funny what <laughs> but it, oh you want to rap you, you want to rap you want to rap cool imagine Let's how successful it. he would be if he was actually funnier <laughs> than you right well and that's oh, the other thing too like you got I, side. I, come on kid <laughs> Yo, you should say I had a rule. If it's if it actually <laughs> made me laugh, <laughs> you good. <laughs> if it was corny, that's when you get in trouble. But Yo. if it was funny and I actually laughed, <laughs> you good to go. Joke. I like that. You're like good that to go. Well. So right. we've we've done what, where you've been. We we've done what you we've gone over what you've done. So I seen something that you posted the other day. I'm I'm gonna try to get into this. What do you have going on here in the future? This Besides like, leading your community, which is fantastic, right. being a shining example to Rochester, right. what else do you have going on? Uh, well, I, I, I shot my first movie uh, um, last month, which is something that was like, because I remember saying, yo, I'm, I'm going to do a movie. I said it I said it in the beginning of the year. And, like, it happened. Actually, the guy that, that made that connection, we met here. We didn't meet here, but our, we connected here on this stage on a comedy. His name is Law. And he was on that first comedy team. And he was one of the people that helped build this place, right, as, as a comedy club. So awesome. he, he ended up leaving and going to Chicago. So he gets to Chicago. And he's, he's on. I see him. Uh, he's a great actor, too. Um, but I see him on, N- oh, not NCIS, one of those cop shows or whatever, and he's in the industry. And then he finally get it a chance. Narrow it down. But I know, right? <laughs> he try, he get, a, he get, he get an opportunity to shoot a movie as a producer. And he, and 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 what a lot of people don't do is like they go back to. He went back to his memories, like, oh, who are the people that I remember that were great and could, could can pull this off? And he immediately called me, like, yo, I want to do this movie, and <laughs> I wanted to be based around you and what you uh, what. I said, come on, let's go, bro. And he was like, yeah, I'm talking about we shooting in, so in three weeks. So he gave you the call to to do a movie about yep. you. I wish I want that to happen. <laughs> it was so dope. Call Called your like, dad's Allie. life. It was, it was dope. <laughs> it was dope. well because he watched. He, like he, he stay tuned to what I'm doing, and I stay consistent in what I do. Like I if, if I, I I continue to put out content. I continue to do my comedy. I continue to be in the community. I continue to put out who I am, and eventually somebody gonna see that and be like, oh my god, he's not stopping and he's good so let's let's figure this out and so we did that we shot that and then i I also um i got because of tiktok right and this is why i try to tell people like use this platform because one is the hottest thing moving right now and so many eyes are on it that 
that like so many opportunities. I did a I did a commercial for Pepsi. I did like wow. and you used with, to have all your hair too. What I did? Well, yes, you know it. Because I played Michael. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Here's something dope. That commercial with Pepsi, right? They called me up. They're like, oh, we saw your stuff. We love your stuff that you do on TikTok. We would love to do a Pepsi campaign. It was recycling around the type of content that you do. And I said, well, I do the I do my content with my class. It was like, great. I said, well, I want to use my class. Okay, I want to shoot it here. Okay, I want to do it. I want to. I want to use the cameraman. So we the people, do this. What? Don't worry, we what? got this. Uh, we will that. send it to it you. It was super dope. <laughs> so the, the basic super goal dope. that that's, that's, it, it that's seems to be a, a thread. Like Word. <laughs> The thread that I'm seeing is is to be able to get yourself with enough hard work and consistency to have the freedom to move as you wish and create as you wish. Boom. I feel like that is it, to be comfortable and free to do what you like, uh, to have a, enough positive impact in those around you. And and, and that go, that aligns with what you were talking about with Shay, entrepreneurship. Yeah. Right? You got to have, you got to be able to create your own. Right now, the people, and during this time, during this pandemic, the people who were like focusing on like creating their own, they're coming. They're they're doing great. They they, they we because back we, in the day there were a couple people who what? focused on creating their own, what? and everybody was just like, okay, well, no, but now no. it's time for a couple a couple new people to create. Everybody everybody's trying to do it now. It's like great, yeah. and I'm not mad at you, <laughs> it's but time. it's just the the people who were doing it before all the hit. It wasn't a struggle to convert because I've been doing this right. Like I'm I'm pretty sure Shay like he like yo ain't, ain't nothing changed. And then and nothing changed because I've been doing this entrepreneurship. I've been, you know, focusing on, you know, creating and building my own as opposed to. And that's the, that's another reason why I kind of started like going away from teaching full time in one classroom to be in this celebrity teacher. Now schools pay me to come to the school. Now I oh, teach on my now. time. So I'm still teaching. <laughs> but just you get paid the, to do the gymnasium they fly you out and stuff too? What? <laughs> yeah. All yeah, that. Okay. All that. Okay. Awesome. And here's something even doper. I literally walked my students through the whole thing. I said, look, as the curriculum, I said, look, class, pay attention. Because when you get, when you, one, when you're early on a platform and you get a whole bunch of followers, now you have, you, have some, you have something right now. And you can build off of it. So watch this. This is what we're going to build. I built my logo in class. Bruce Gang. If you look up Bruce Gang and and on Love on it. TikTok, that has 450 million hits. That hashtag. 450 50 million, million hits on that hashtag. Good God. I created that with my classroom. There's a dance trend that I created with my students, and then I told them once you get to a certain spot, I said if we oh, get they got a dance, they got they got all, a, that, a all that, all that, <laughs> all that, all that, all that. I said and then I said once you get to a certain point, you gotta go for it. So don't be surprised if I don't come back next year. But watch, watch how I move and do the same because there's so many opportunities with social media and they all want to be YouTubers right now. And that's a yep. legitimate career path. It today. is. My kids said the same thing. And I'm like, my parents don't understand. I'm like, that's, that's a real thing. But it take you work. Do it. 100%. Your kid is a genius. <laughs> I, honestly, he's in fourth grade. My Excuse me. We're talking about me. Him. We're not talking about his kid. Focus <laughs> on me. No, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just like, I'm just like. I feel like my kid needs to do a little bit of extra fourth grade work when she's not doing the sixth grade work just to go back. Okay. Work. But Dude. yes. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Chaz Bruce, I appreciate you coming on to the show. Appreciate you spending your positivity, uh, giving us the, the blueprint and the path, and giving the, the viewers out there the blueprint and the path, especially the young Word. black POCs out there, the people of color, the people that, that come from nothing, the, that consistency, hard work, education is the path. That is, find a mentor. Find somebody like Mr. Bruce. Bruce Art. Find somebody like Miss Dodge. Art and and those, those people will help you through your journey. So again, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for sharing no with us. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Oh My God, Oh, look at you. Forgot his name. Joey Sasso. That's crazy. What's going on, sir? Jo I said jo a horrible jo brain fart. Say something, What's Joe. What's going on, sir? How you doing? Am I staying here or should I go? Oh, you, you can, can hang stay? out just if you might move over. Here, you, just, see, you come over here. Perfect. We'll do it like the show. There you go. There we go. Straight out of Rock City. We're about My to start doing TikToks. My man comes represented right off the muscle. What's oh, going man, on? How you doing, sir? What's going on, boss? How you doing? So I brain farted out your name for a second. I've been looking at it for like three days. Bro, some I, happens to me all the time. No worries. <laughs> no worries. What up? What's going Hi. on, man? Thank you for joining us, man. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me, bro. No problem. Thank you. Uh, who's your friend? This is my boy, Nick. He's the producer of my upcoming film, Young Line of the West. What's up, guys? What's up? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Young Line of the West. I, I saw some previews of it. Uh, it looks fantastic. It yeah, really man. does. It it, would, so that was like an indie film that you guys got funded to do because you won a contest, or how, how did that go? So basically, I moved to LA when I was 18. Okay. And now, from Call you down. everyone, who, I'm 26. Okay. So everyone who's seen The Circle is starting to find out that I'm an actor. You held on to your New York for a long time. Very, yeah, very I long get, time. Look, you came out <laughs> representing, bro. You're That's right. Playing. Straight out of Rock City. It'll never leave them. No, <laughs> no. But, you know, film is my first passion, and I knew no one was ever going to give me anything. And so much of tonight has been talking about entrepreneurship. And you have to know your craft. You have to build your skill level. So this film took eight years to get made. Jesus. Nonstop. Everyone telling us, give up. Move on. You do something else. Ooh, I and love those. And it's like, love you can't those. do it. Like, you know what, though? Like, sometimes there are projects you need to get to an, another place. This was something that was so passionate. It takes place in Rochester. And I got to the place with Nick and my other partners where we were like, if we don't do this just on our own, it's never going to happen and show that we can deliver a full length feature that doesn't look like an indie. It doesn't look like we didn't have a budget. It doesn't look like it was filmed in Rochester. Oh, it looks like it was filmed in Rochester. <laughs> it, it, it all takes place here and it's it's wild. It's a very hard R rated film and how Couple life, Jenny can Yeah, how, how life ended up working. The funny thing about it is, you know, I made the film. We were here for about what, three months total? Yeah, three months. About three months total. I go back to L.A. And as cliche life stories work, right before I left to come here, my girlfriend of eight years and me broke up. Day one before coming here. So from the start, because you said eight years you've been at yeah, so Eight years. Yeah. So I had to go back to L.A. and completely rebuild my life after pulling off the most amazing task of my career, of my life at that point. And she then, dumped you after you won yo, the circle? No, this was before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Isn't it okay. weird? That's how like, it happens. Yeah, really? Well, when you reach a certain <laughs> level of like uh, self-awareness, when you mm -hmm. hit that, that, that goal for yourself, when you achieve that, it seems when that's when the people that are not meant to be in your life... That's when they either take themselves out or something takes them out of your life. You shed them like a snake skin. And, and yeah. I'm about to go through that. Yeah, it's like, like a lobster shell. Like it gets right. uncomfortable. It sucks to grow. It sucks to shed that skin. But to reach that next level, it, it has to go with along with those things. I think that's what life's about, though. I feel like there comes Nobody those moments where those chapters come to an end and you can go one way or the other. And I could have went with my heart and my personal feeling saying I, I love this girl more than anything and that's so what matters and I, I said found out like later yeah. that like that was the case and we weren't here because of that so, like, um, let's talk about acting a little bit more. I know you won the circle, and that's humongous. Yeah. That, that's a humongous thing. Um, was that your first big uh, break, your first big? Oh, that changed my life yeah. overnight. So when I went back to L.A., I was in a depression. I'm trying to build my life back up, and I'm like, just keep going. You got to stay strong. You got to stay strong. You've sacrificed everything. Six months after getting back to L.A. is when I found out about the circle. Someone came in, was like, you are perfect for this thing. Came How in, many people yes, did you go against? Yes, I am. I, probably thousands, to tell really? you the truth. But I, well, yeah, because it goes, it goes in phases and narrows down. I so. wasn't even, to tell you the truth, I, it wasn't something I was even that excited for because I was like, you know, cliche actor of like, I'm an actor. I don't do reality TV. And he's like, just come in and audition. And I'm like, all right, I'm so used to auditioning. Let me just go in just to appease this person. It's a contact friend of mine. And I just went in, was myself. And it was one of those things that you never expect in life that just completely took off. Listen, That's you, awesome. you, you Rochester guys got sweat because they just knocked on his door and asked to make a movie Yo. about him. And, and you were like, I don't even really want to you know be what? here. It's that energy. I feel like <laughs> everybody like, we've had. <laughs> Everybody we've had on on our on the couch today has had the same type of like energy and vibe to them. Where it's like they're creative, but they're driven creative. And you're you've got hands. I've heard you've been boxing since you were what six years old. Now? Since I was six years old. Uh, yeah. It's not Did how many times pass? you get hit. It's how many times you get hit. Keep no. moving forward. Ah, so that's Before one pass. of those things. As bad as it gets, it's always about moving forward and trying to be the better version of yourself. Um, as a better version of yourself. Um, when I, I, I did a little bit of acting uh, with some really good actors. The city. And let me tell you what, when you you think you can act, you know, you're fresh, you're doing, you think, yeah, I can act, I can do that, that's cool. You step into a room with an actual legitimate, like accredited actor, mm -hmm. it's a whole nother world. You spend, I spent the rest of that movie just trying not to look terrible. I can like, never be oh, an actor. No, I would be like, oh, why are you all looking at me right now? Like, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> it's one of those things that a lot of people, I don't think, realize what goes into the craft and how long that takes to build and that's why when I was struggling all these years like all those years living in LA I never went out I didn't party I didn't drink so I was like I have to work five to six days a week just to pay rent LA is expensive but sure I, is. Have to, I have to change my mind that 
that's my free time. Doing like multiple projects too. Multiple. And we having to remember all the like different lines. Oh, I, I mean, in terms of I was studying, like for me, I didn't go to college. I knew that wasn't going to be for me. I'd get myself in debt for no reason of I could just move to LA and start pursuing my dream. So I studied in all the best schools in LA and that for me was my college. And I'd be working six, seven days a week, being in two different ongoing classes, trying to get auditions, trying to maintain a relationship. And this went on for, you know, almost a decade. And it's it like was Joey, Joey from Friends, Joey from from, from I hear rock. Joey from Friends all <laughs> the time. It's the, only because you're I a Joey. Joey and, I, and, from Friends. and it's though, how you doing? I'm like, oh my <laughs> God, I got better hair than Joey Tribbiani. This is just facts. <laughs> Young De Niro. Um, Amazing. You used to like practice in the mirror and stuff. Acting? Do you still do it? Do you still oh, yeah, yeah. That's oh, boxing. Thing. Yeah, no, yeah. Shadow Not boxing. boxing, acting. Do you, no. like, do you say your lines You know what? Here? Never. My, I'm a writer as well, so my exactly. writing process is really weird. I, I like walk around my apartment listening to music, and I've just always had this thing since I was a kid where I just see scenes, and I don't know where in a story it takes place, so then it becomes like a puzzle. So I'll sit there, and I know I have something I see so vividly. I'm going to write that out, and I don't know where in the story that's going to take place or what story it's going to take place in. So I have folders of endless things. And at certain points, you're sitting down to write and you're like, I'm going to connect this one with that one. And now we got to put the rest of the puzzle together. I that sounds like me way. trying to set up the Chromebook. For, <laughs> I swear to God. I understand <laughs> the way the process learning. works. Like for events and stuff, I'll see like a port, like a little snapshot of something. And then that's you try amazing. to build off of that snapshot. So you got this moving wheel, this moving wheel, and try to line them up. Yeah. Weird that's question. Amazing. Are you clairvoyant by any chance? Do you see... Ghost once in a while. No, I, I not clairvoyant, but I am very intuitive. Do you okay. see any now? So I know, no, if I way. did, I would call the guys from uh, Ghost Adventures yeah. to come in and investigate because I'm even obsessed like with them guys. Though. Don't you ever talk about the GAC he's, like that? Really so, like he's so actors, obsessed with though. that show. That's it's weird you ask that question. Actors. You know, what? I was getting and that vibe off of him because I I am as well. I'm a bit intuitive, and so like usually when people see those snapshots, I read into. I'm like, what are these images that I'm seeing? Sometimes it's stuff that'll happen. Later on, the orbs so, you had the orbs in the junkyard, yeah. <laughs> so that's why when you said that, it kind of clicked something in my head. Like, I, I feel as though, like, you've got that thing to you, too, where it's like uh, that that gut feeling is more than a gut These feeling. These are actually to you. all ghosts, bro. Right I've here. known <laughs> since I was three years old what I wanted to do, what my passion was. It's never changed. I always looked at it as like, God bless me in life at such an early age to let me know what I'm here to do and the road I have to go on where so many people in my life, friends, family are like, you have no idea how lucky you are because I never know what I want to do. I just am working this job. But I feel like the trade off of that was you're blessed and lucky to know what you have to do, but now you got to work for it. Yep. There's and no security. There's no, there's no security net. There's no fallback. There's no, not, there's, no plan B. People you are, say, you're, you're stunt man. You give are your, yeah. Give yourself a, a five year plan or a seven year <laughs> plan. What's your, and I'm like, look at it. It's a five this, a plan. This is live or die. <laughs> this is what my life is. I'm either going to die trying or I'm going to make it. And Amen. it's been, it's been a wild year, man. Like even up until the show came out, I knew I won the show. I had to keep it a secret for six months. He I'm knew. a promoter. That's so. I'll be turn my head falling off. Just I know how dance. is that because we we got we got big old mouths up yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had, to, you I had to act family like too. I had to act like for six months. I didn't know what was going on with him. Oh really? We okay. worked at the same bar, so yeah. all the same Joey. people. It was hard, man. But just to see the reaction because I'm just so conditioned to the business and the industry of. You never know what's gonna happen. You yeah. can't you can't put your faith into anything. You can put all your hard work and discipline into it, but at the end of the day, things are gonna happen how they're gonna happen. So I'm like, I don't know. Like this is a show. Like I won, so I benefited. It's great, but I don't know how it's gonna be received. And the show just took off worldwide. That whole overnight success, life changing. My life has completely changed in the matter of a night. Everything That's changed. awesome. Well, congratulations. You deserve a success. Um, the projects you have coming up look awesome. So besides the movie uh, coming out, what else do you have going on? What are you working on now? Because there's probably not just one thing. I'm guessing you've got this over here, that over there. This it's yeah. l it's yeah. just like that. I, I'm in between right now probably off the top of my head at least 10 different things that are going on but you know the cool thing for me, me is <laughs> i always rep being a kid from rochester that's what i'm Hell most yeah. five, proud eight, of five. five eight five baby always and i want to come back to the rock i want to do things like we're doing now i want to i think there's so much talent in this world especially where we live because of the environment because of the type of people that live here and you know all I can say at this point is I have something very big coming up in the near future that might bring me back to Rochester for some more time. And awesome. If that happens, then it's you know, not a baby I'll be out way, a lot. Right? 
We'll see. No, oh, oh, oh. That, no, <laughs> ki- Seduct- yeah, no shot, no shot. But yeah, no man, comment. Rochester, you gotta, you gotta represent where you're coming from. All man. the guys at the table went for the wood. <laughs> I got you, bro. I got you. It's not me, but I got you. So uh, that's awesome stuff. One of the best things about Rochester, shooting wise, is. Every single type of scene you can imagine is 20 minutes away. Yep. Whether you want an urban scene, whether you want a downtown scene, whether you want a country scene, whether you want a, a field, it's all 20 minutes away. People yep. don't understand that the variety of scenes here from the beach to the canals to the, the city, it's, it's all here for Rochester. So it's a and beautiful thousands of dollars cheaper to fill <laughs> Thousands. I know you go from tax bracket to tax bracket and like <laughs> real quick. Yeah. We made our a movie mild, for thirteen thousand dollars cash. <laughs> Nothing. Amazing. It was budgeted at five to ten million, and everyone told us this is physically impossible. You are never going to be able to do this. It's a union film. Every single thing we got the jail in downtown Rochester, which hasn't had any production shoot in it. We got a whole tier of cells. Is I mean, that why they closed Henrietta? Oh no, you said downtown. <laughs> downtown. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it was it was just such a wild experience, and if everything wasn't going on in the world right now, it probably would be getting ready ready to be released. I would say sometime this fall, but due to the pandemic, due to everything going on, it's probably going to be, I would guess, a spring to fall 2021 release. Okay. And hopefully, God willing, it's going to be a Netflix original. I've been saying it since the beginning. And the funny thing is about the circle when we needed extras for the movie. I would go around to, we needed people for our club scenes. And I'm like, I'm making a movie for Netflix. And everyone's like, oh shit, I got to come be in a Netflix movie. This is crazy. I end up blowing up on Netflix and now have those contacts. So I really do believe. Can we, we can, we can do you this. spoken into existence. Yeah, man. I no, think you speak it out there. Stuff, man. Yeah. Tell, it's I, weird. It just falls out of your mouth. Like, I can't believe I just said that. I don't know where it came from, but it happens. So, yeah. so is West Side Line, what is that about? Is it about a promoter? Because I've been a promoter it, my whole entire it's life. It's hilarious. Liter- it's literally about <laughs> like, a promoter who's got a boss who's got shady background. and it's Every a, promoter. Every promoter. So are you the promoter? Yeah, I'm the promoter. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you know it's a it's a very no, it's, a it, it, it's like a really hard r cautionary tale all takes place here and that was also the other reason we had to just be strategic about the release is now people know me and my real personality from the circle from that we made a very hard r Wait, wait, wait. You had a Listen, pr- movie about a promoter Rochester. You did a movie about a Bieber. Where are you, okay? what are you okay. breakfast, baby? Yeah. <laughs> Our review is going to be like <laughs> like the review. Well, no, no matter what happens, no matter <laughs> what happens for, for distribution, like we want to do a premiere here in Rochester. Awesome. It's ready. There you I go. think that's full, amazing. Full weekend at the Little. That's like our goal. And we're going to make a weekend out of that. So <laughs> you can't leave the show uh, being somebody from Rock City who's transplanted, who's doing all these things without telling us where your favorite plate place is. Oh. Stevie T's. Ooh, easy, I, I can, he I can it. easy. Stevie T's okay. first stop as okay. soon as I fly okay. in. And to me, it's still Nick's, but no, could, yeah. you know what I'm saying. It's, it, it's, but you gotta say Stevie T's. How do you take your plate? Uh, I do cheeseburger plate, extra, extra, extra onions, oh my God, yes. extra, yes, extra, yes, extra yes, onions, yes. and like literally, like I want a mountain of onions, it's not an like a little bit. Skin thing yeah, I do. with uh, mac salad, home fries, meat sauce, spicy mustard. I love it after it's been in the fridge for six hours, nice and cold at three o'clock in the morning. So oh, it's fantastic! Oh my God, it's fantastic! Listen, I, I do the three way. So I get a uh, mac salad, French fry, home fry. Yeah, and then I do the meat sauce, and I get extra onions, of course. Hit it with all the ketchup. I'm not really too big on mustard though. Spicy mustard, bro. Spicy you got to go, not okay. regular, spicy okay. mustard. Okay. Okay. I, I put mad Franks on it, too. I got the Franks. Franks is fire. Franks is fire. Right. I lived in Buffalo for four years. How so about wings? What do you do for wings? <laughs> wings? I'm simple, man. I grew up next to Carbones, so I'm a Carbones car pizza guy. Yeah. Right? I love Carbones. Oh, my God, I'm so jealous because they don't deliver, so you can just walk there and well, buy. I'm, yeah, so where my parents live in Hilton, they got the, you know, the, the, Ace, the Ace Pool store, like right yeah. over there by North Greece? They got the Carbones over there, so that's been my spot my whole life, so whenever I come home, it's either Stevie T's first or we're getting car bones, wings, everything at the house. And man, there ain't food in LA like there is in Rochester. There is not, man. That's it's what terrible. It, the food in Rochester, honestly, I feel it's one of the best areas for food in the uh, world. Agreed. Our grew- Western grocery New York, is upstate Western New York has some of the best food in the world. Agreed. And I, and I will go anywhere and I will argue that with anybody. All day. Yeah. That's no, all we got. There, there is no pizza <laughs> in, in LA got, whatsoever. <laughs> there's no Italian food. There's no nothing. That's why it's kind of easy to diet and stay in shape when there's not like, I'm home right now and I just started working out and dieting, man. 
everything's Chicken open French, here. My mom plates. is cooking <laughs> everything. I ate 25 <laughs> meatballs the other day. Yo. And all the family peppers. Like, how are you supposed to diet salad? here? It's so hard. Listen, no. if you ever ever need some help with That's something some like that, I'm, I'm willing to help you Amber. out as a favor. <laughs> yes. You call me over up. You know, I'll eat some meatballs just to help you out. Bro, come over whenever you want. Honestly, my mom my mom always has plates ready for everyone. Our house is open whenever you want, bro. Yo, thank you. I appreciate it. My mom's the same way. My son's a half Turkalian. So he's yeah, yeah. Turkish and Italian. His, what did you uh, his, call him? He's a little Turkalian. That's what that's. that's I, no, I just made it. I was a Turkalian. He's half Turk, half, uh, half that's Italian. Italian. It's Italian. It's Italian. Yeah. Turkalian. <laughs> yeah. Turkalian. He's my little turkey <laughs> meatball. <laughs> 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 so, you see, uh, we're not supposed to eat pork, but you know, Italian food. You know, How are you going to yeah, not? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard not to. Sorry, Mom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Dude, what else do you have going on? So, a million different things. A million different things. You're in Rochester. Um, what are your support systems, which is impressive, and I feel like why we have you back here today uh, is is your family. Yeah, family is everything. That's my hoodie mm. he's wearing right there. That's my merch, family over everything. <laughs> family over everything. That's, I mean, that's I something that, like that I've never lost sight of with everything that's been going on. And I this mean, straight out of Rock City, that's you too, right? Straight out. No, this one is, I mean, this is for, team. yeah, this is for the soccer team. Oh, okay. For the other uh, Saturday, he's the, uh, he's the celebrity coach for the Rock City Boom. Oh, speaking of boom, uh, the goalkeeper needs uh, Twitter votes for the the Golden Glove. So if you're listening, okay. hop on Twitter, uh, hit up Stewart for his votes on the the Golden Glove. Oh, so I'm sorry, back to your clothing line. Yeah. So the, you got straight out of rock is the Rock City one, and that is the your clothing line right Family there. Family over everything. Family, Family over first everything. First and always, man. Family always, over man. Everything. You right have here. to, especially I think if you're. If you're going to take your life in your own hands and you're going to go out into the world, I am so blessed to come from the family that I have, and I'm the only one who's ever left. So being on this journey, like when the circle happened and everything was crazy, for me, I would go into interviews, and I'm doing a press run all over, just the craziest stuff. And I'm telling everyone from my heart, it's not even about me. It's about validation for my family who has always believed in me, always had my back when I'm calling them on those down days and I'm not feeling good going through all that and just pushing me, keeping me going. This is like one of those old school things of like when I win, we all win. How many yes. of them were at the airport when you landed? Well, only my mom and dad because my sister is pregnant and they're taking all the precautions because of the COVID thing. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. you. Yeah, that's why I came back to town because I'm like, How I, much food I can't have miss you eaten. It's going to be an Uncle here. Joe. It's been insane. <laughs> Look, he's sweating insane. meatballs right it's now. Been it's been insane. <laughs> it's been insane. It was the plan. So that, that's awesome. I appreciate you sharing your story. And I appreciate you coming by tonight. If you could leave uh, somebody that, that's young, that, that grew up like you did, that grew up in Rochester, that doesn't have you know, the opportunities that you find in New York or L.A., mm. uh, a piece of advice, what would that be? Coming from somebody from Rochester, you grew up here, you, you eat the food, you, you, you walk the walk, you eat talk the, the talk. This is who you are, obviously, and it never left you. You yeah. stayed true to it. So let these guys know who are, who are looking up to you, how do I be like him, what to do? You know, man, I idolize all of my heroes, but always knew you had to take your own course. What I would tell anybody is follow your gut and always follow your dreams. I'm always going to be a kid at heart, sitting in my bedroom, dreaming about being an adult someday, going <laughs> after everything I want to chase in the world. And I never lost sight of that. Still to this day, that's still what I do. When I go to sleep at night, my, my brain doesn't shut off. So I would say the one thing to me that I've always feared is growing up and losing, losing your imagination. Losing, you losing your, right? yeah, man, losing your freedom. Are you excited freedom. though because you have been so successful at 26? Are you excited now because you, you, you've proven yourself to yourself? Um, are you excited for what's family. to come? Yeah. To, to be this far at 26 is big. Yeah. People that get into this at 35 and whatever and they don't get it. You know, it's, you know, 45, whatever, it's, it's an amazing feeling, but I'm naturally just a workaholic who doesn't want to stop. So sometimes I forget about the accomplishments and things that have been happening because I'm like, you know what? What's like, next? I haven't done nothing yet. I'm just getting started. Like the cool, like the coolest thing for me, if That's you're a someone- That's mentality. I feel if like you're, your son yeah, has like, that mentality about school. Just imagine being a hustler <laughs> like you are, like right? Done, Grinding and how many times you've had the door slammed in your face to yep. you finally get that break to where it's like, now all that knowledge you built, all that work, that mentality, now they're the ones calling you. Now they're the ones that you really have that opportunity to prove yourself. So I remember an acting teacher in LA once gave us this speech because a kid showed up to class late and she's a very very successful actress and she's like every single one of you and she was pissed is gonna get your shot it's going it's going to happen whether you're ready or not that's on you Ooh. and that has haunted me 
for so many years. Every right single here. one of our guests came through with a, a real banger. Like Yo, a real, everyone. Yeah. Every single yeah. one. It's yeah. great. That's an amazing piece of advice. So your opportunity will come. It's whether you're ready at that point, mentally, uh, skill-wise. That's a fantastic Bro, way to Bro, you can't. I mean, honestly, the, I've lived in the industry for so many years. I have so many friends who are name, name, name people. There is no room for error. You, you, got, you got some famous friends? Oh, I got some <laughs> friends. So <laughs> out of everything that's happened, what's the one thing that you woke up to one day was like, holy shit, this really is me. This really happened. This is my life. You is know, I would that- say the moment for me was when I went to dinner with Amy Poehler at the Chateau Marmont in LA. And that was like the pinch yourself moment of <laughs> what the hell is my life right now? But <laughs> just meeting someone whose work you've respected for so many years and just is a fantastic human being and able to start that friendship because I always say real recognizes real, man. And that's awesome. I always think from the people I've met and I've met, a-list, A-list stars, those are usually the people who are the most down to earth. They deserve every single thing that they've achieved in their career, and it's the people who are not where they want to be. They could be somewhere great, but they don't look at it like that, that are usually bitter, have a bad attitude. And the industry is like life, man. You are nothing but your reputation. I don't care how big you are. No one's going to want to work with you or do anything. If you're difficult, if you're a diva, like show up, and you have to execute on every single avenue from showing up and knowing everyone's name on set, making sure you know all your lines, making sure you're at every interview on time giving 110% because that is what's going to lead to the next few things. Look at how many people you've probably seen over the years whose careers have taken off and you've never seen anything. Yep. Because I just you have bartenders. That are just <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of things that go way. behind that, man. And and for me it's always looking at this as this is a lifestyle. You don't live it just for in front of the camera. You live it 24 hours a day with everything you do and it's either you love it yep. or you don't. And I always say you have to be crazy to be in this business because there's no guarantees of anything and fame all that like I can honestly say man i never was seeking that never wanted that i just love what i do i love my passion i knew if it happens it happens and there's good and bad to it but if your motivation is fame money please find another business do you like the fame or no do you like it a little bit no i mean what's really cool to me is i've always been a fan and to have people who look up to me the way i've looked up to other people is amazing because i've met some heroes who don't live up to your expectations and it just breaks your heart so one thing i've done from the beginning is i like to make myself accessible to all my fans i spend all my free time on insta on twitter on snap on everything replying back to every message having conversations facetiming people at random because you know also they it's cliche at this point but you're building a brand And you need to make sure that you are doing that correctly from the jump. And I want to be the guy who I might have a career that's going well, that's big. But guess what? I'm taking all of my free time, and he can attest, sitting on my phone till my fingers are in pain. And literally, like, you just get so wired not being able to stop because I've never seen anyone else do that. I want to be the person who does that. And then still do that, show up to work the next day, ready to go, firing on all cylinders. Because to me, being a professional is what it's all about. And you know you have to be a professional. Amen. Yeah, Hell man. yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. People don't don't really get that. They think about the fame and this. And you have to. You wake up and you you eat this. You sleep this mm-hmm. you, every day. It's in your head. It's uh, no matter what Successful you're doing. Are there's busy something people. in the back yeah. of your head. They're busy with their craft. You're going through your role. You're going through your character. And to get into a character. Mm-hmm. It's such a weird thing. You have to transform yourself into a whole nother human being. Understand how they grew up, where they grew up, what they ate for breakfast, what type of mom they had, what time their mom How they walk, how they talk, what their mannerisms are. I mean, every single thing. I mean, that's why my dad gave me the best advice when I was young, and he made me do everything. So from the time I was young, I've just always been able to pick something up and do it very good very quickly. And he said, you always want to have something in common with people in your life, no matter what it is.